Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho and welcome back to another episode of Every Effect in Adobe Premiere Pro Explained. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the obsolete video folder. As the name suggests, many of these effects are left in here. They may, might have been from older versions or older methods of how to do something. So sometimes they're not necessarily useless, but sometimes there may be something else that already does the job in a more concise, less redundant way or just newer effects such as the Lumetri color panel that do the job of many of these in, in one swoop, kind of. But just to show you what these are for the sake of completion, first up we have auto color. We also have auto contrast and auto levels. These are something you may be familiar with from Photoshop. It basically just attempts to automatically fix the color, contrast, and levels of your photo. So you can see if I pull out the Lumetri scopes, we could see auto color, auto contrast tries to fix the contrast, Auto levels tries to fix the levels. Within each of these, you have options to clip the black and white values and slightly adjust the mid-tones and blend the strength of the effect. However, they're all just very slight automatically applied effects. So you see a very minor difference in most clips. And many times you might just go into the Lumetri color panel if you want to adjust contrast and levels yourself. Next up, we have fast blur. This is just another way to blur your image. Again, with something like Gaussian Blur or many of the blurs available already, this might be a little bit obsolete, but it still achieves a blur. Next up, we have Fast Color Corrector. This is also another way to color correct. It has an interesting little UI here. Uh, I assume for older versions, this might have been pretty useful. However, now we do have the fully fleshed out Lumetri color panel with basically everything that you'd really want in terms of curves and color wheels and mid-tones and highlights and shadows. Although it is interesting to see the visual color wheel represented in this way. Next up we have Luma corrector and Luma curve and Luma refers to the luminance or kind of like the brightness of the image. And so with this you can adjust all different aspects of the brightness, contrast, contrast levels, gamma levels, Again, maybe not the first way that I'd go to adjust the luminance, especially with all the new color tools available. With these curves tools that are coming up, like the Luma curve and skipping one over the RGB curve, I do have a tutorial that goes all in depth about how to use curves tool. And I have many tutorials about curves and color correction and color grading that go over all these fundamental basics if you're interested in learning more. But with the RGB curves tool, Again, you have an option to be able to adjust all the curves. I suppose it is cool to be able to see them all at once at the same time, but you do have the same exact tool under the Lumetri color panel, and you can switch from red, green, and blue adjustments. Next up, we have RGB color corrector going back one. And again, this is another way to do color correction. It's a little bit more complicated than what you'd find under the basic correction tools, just being able to adjust sliders of exposure and contrast in the Lumetri color panel. In this case, you adjust the gamma and the gain and the pedestal to get a balance of contrast how you like. So you can adjust the highlights, shadows, and midtones specifically. And you have the option to adjust each color channel within those portions. But again, a little bit technical and less intuitive in my opinion. Next up, we have shadow highlight. This tries to fix the balance between the shadows and the highlights. By default, it's on auto, but you can always tried to manually do it, so shadow amount brighter, highlight amount darker. But again, in the Lumetri color panel, we have the shadow and highlight sliders, which might just be a little bit more intuitive. Nearing the end here, we have three-way color corrector. Again, another way to color the shadows, mid-tones, and highlights for different looks, color correcting or grading. But again, it's in the Lumetri color panel now with color wheels. Not necessarily saying that these are worse or better. If you prefer this UI, perhaps there might be different flexibilities and, and functions that it, that it affords you or allows you, but you shouldn't feel as though every single effect in every single folder does some specific job. Sometimes there's redundancies and overlaps and just different ways to do the same thing. Lastly, we have video limiter. This is a way for broadcast specifications where you need to limit a certain amount of some luminance, chrominance, or aspect of the image. So going along with all of these, a lot of them had to do with color. So I would recommend if you want to go more in depth on color and color editing, check out my tutorials 
on color grading and color correcting and curves and all those in-depth things. But that's the obsolete video effects folder. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for all my new videos. This is a part of a series of a playlist where I'm going over every single video effect one by one. So you can check it out all in a playlist on my channel. And I'll see you in the next video where we go over perspective effects.